In the early hours of the 24th of February 1987, astronomers at the Las Campanas Observatory in Chile spotted something astonishing. A new bright dot in the sky. 170,000 years after exploding in the Large Magellanic Cloud just past the edge of our galaxy, the light from the supernova later named SN1987A reached Earth. The chance sighting was soon confirmed by other astronomers and made news worldwide. The brightest supernova recorded in nearly 400 years and the closest to be captured by modern instruments. Finally, scientists had a chance to observe a supernova at relatively close range from almost the first moment it appeared, testing years of theorising and fueling hundreds of papers worth of research. SN1987A taught scientists more about these cosmic events than any other supernova, but there is still so much to learn, and capturing the first moments as a new supernova appears in the sky could be key. Which begs the question, how will astronomers know where to look? And critically, make sure they don't miss the next one. SN1987A was a Type II core collapse supernova. When a star at the end of its life, in this case a blue supergiant called Sangelic 69202, is unable to produce enough energy to push back against its own enormous gravity, it starts to contract and an iron core forms at its centre. Matter from the core then collapses inwards even further. In mere milliseconds, a burst of neutrinos is released as protons and electrons are compressed so tightly that they combine to form a proto-neutron star, as dense as the nucleus of an atom. Meanwhile, the intense gravity pulls the remains of the star onto this core, releasing a shockwave that rebounds outwards with such force that new heavy elements are produced and expelled as the star disintegrates in the supernova explosion. The light from a single supernova can be as bright as entire galaxies, but this represents only a small fraction of the total energy emitted. The rest was carried away by the near massless, barely interacting neutrinos. And that provides scientists with an opportunity. The neutrinos actually get out of the supernova before the light does. And um, that doesn't mean neutrinos travel faster than light. The reason is that it takes quite a while for the photons to beat their way out of the envelope because photons um, interact a lot. Neutrinos don't, they just sail out. Um, and so the neutrinos will come out promptly and we will get a burst and observe the burst on Earth before the, the light would give us a first, um, a first signal of a supernova. This is Kate Scholberg. She's part of a group that set up the Supernova Early Warning System, or SNUS, an international collaboration aimed at catching the next big supernova in unprecedented detail. It's the name Supernova Early Warning System. The neutrinos give us an early warning that a supernova may be about to appear somewhere in the galaxy. SNUS links together the world's neutrino detector experiments so that bursts of supernova neutrinos can be quickly identified and reported. If any two or more of those detectors send a message that's time tagged within 10 seconds, then SNUS will send out an alert to the, uh, to the astronomical community. And that gives astronomers a vital head start telling them to search the skies in the hopes that they will detect the moment that light from a supernova first reaches Earth, hot on the heels of the neutrino burst and rich with data. Snooze has been online for decades and has never triggered an alert. And now it's due an upgrade. I mean, it is very simple and robust and actually that's an advantage. It's basically just run perfectly well, almost no downtime over more than a decade. So that's the advantage of being simple, but um, being simple means also you don't have potentially full capacity. The SNUS team want to make the network more sensitive. To avoid false alarms, the threshold for an alert has always been set very high. 
But as the years have gone on, astronomers have become accustomed to receiving alerts from networks like Snooze and investigating them even if they turn out to be nothing. And that offers new opportunities. One of the big things we would like to do with a revamp, a Snooze 2.0, is uh, be able to have less less gold-plated input to to the to the network. Uh, if we'd be okay chasing after something that might might be supernova neutrinos, might not be, and people aren't upset about it, we'd like to do that. From our own perspective, uh, then we get to practice, we get to get good at it, we get to make sure there aren't any bugs lurking. From the science perspective, maybe there are things that make bursts of neutrinos that aren't quite as blindingly obvious as a whole star going kaboom in our galaxy. And that isn't all. Neutrino detectors have come a long way since Snooze was first launched. They're bigger, their signal is stronger, they would see more neutrinos because they're just physically larger. And in the next few years, even larger experiments are, are, are coming online. And so possibly now, and certainly within the next decade, each individual's experiment detection of that supernova wave front of neutrinos sloshing across their detector, they'll be able to get a really good time of that wave past my detector to within a millisecond and be able to report that time. And so by getting measurements of individual t- times at experiments down precisely enough with today's experiments, you could reconstruct the fact that, oh, that it, went, it, it first went through Italy and then, uh, and then that's Antarctica and then Japan and use the fact that you know how fast they're going, nearly the speed of light, and the distances between those detectors to be able to say, so therefore, it, uh, it came from over there, and get a, get a, get a direction uh, on it, which of course is a very useful if you want people to go chase after it, right? If SNOOS can identify an area of sky to look at, the world's telescopes will have a better chance of catching the supernova. And that doesn't only include multi-million dollar observatories. They want all the world's astronomers to join the search. I'm uh, Art Oksanen from Finland, amateur astronomer interested about transient events. Amateur astronomers like Arto are a key part of the search. Their excellent knowledge of the night sky and flexibility to react quickly to alerts make them the perfect resource to pinpoint a new object. And they have the advantage of numbers. We, we amateur astronomers, we are worldwide, everywhere. We can we can jump to any any object or target at any time. So I, if I get the email from uh, from some professional astronomers midnight when I'm observing, I can stop what I'm doing at that time and jump on, on the new targets. Alerts from Snooze bring them into the heart of an international astronomy collaboration. It's uh, the most I- interesting and uh, gratifying thing to do. So I have been uh, kind of uh, wishing to be a, a professional astronomer myself or scientist. But now I can, I can be a scientist on my free time. Observing the next supernova in our galaxy will involve a global collective effort. Huge neutrino experiments and networks of astronomers will point the way, but understanding these stellar explosions will need many different perspectives. In the past, it's been, I have a telescope and I can see light of different colors, but it's, it's still all light. And then as humanity got radio telescopes, for example, hey, you can see radio waves, you can see past a lot of stuff. You can see infrared or ultraviolet or x-rays, uh, gamma rays, you can see all these different wavelengths. They're still all electromagnetic radiation, but kind of the different categories of them are so different that that's, they're all different messengers, even though they're all really all just photons of electromagnetic radiation. But there's actually more than that. There's more than photon messengers in the, in the universe. Um, neutrinos, of course, they're my favorite one. Um, neutrinos also bring information. Uh, there's also gravitational waves, and that's a, a newcomer. And then there's also cosmic rays, and so it's really you know, much broader than photons. Multi-messenger astronomy is you know, everybody bringing information to the party. This is multi-messenger astronomy, the study of all the signals arriving on Earth from a cosmic event like a supernova. And it offers our best chance yet of understanding our universe. And when you have different messengers and you can see different aspects of the same process, you can learn a lot more than just looking through whatever small hole you're looking through in the fence. No matter how cool a picture you get, being able to have that different perspective of different 
totally different processes making these different messengers, either different wavelengths of light or particles or gravitational waves, really lets people pin down what really is going on out there.